A 29 year old woman presents to the fertility clinic with a two year history of difficulty conceiving. She reports regular menstrual cycles occurring every 28 days with normal flow and duration. Her medical history is unremarkable and she has not been on any contraceptives for over three years. A serum progesterone level is measured on day 21 of her menstrual cycle and found to be significantly low. See, in this question or in other questions pertaining to fertility, first thing, the age. The age is very important in fertility. She is 29 years old and she has got regular cycles. Then everything else is unremarkable. So, the next thing, you have got this in the first reading itself. The next time you read, what you need to do is, when everything is negative, the only positive thing that you get here, or as far as it is negative for the woman, but still from the question point of view, it is that her serum progesterone, which has been measured on day 21, is significantly low. That is the one thing of importance from the question. So, what, uh, what have they asked? Which of the following is the most likely explanation for her low progesterone levels and difficulty in conceiving? For this, we need to know the hormones of the menstrual cycle. How does the menstrual cycle work or what are the hormones and how are they produced? We will start with the FSH and LH. FSH is there, FSH starts rising and what happens? FSH will stimulate the granulosa cells to secrete estrogen. Once the estrogen starts rising, there is, see, along with that, there is an endometrial cycle that is happening. The proliferative phase is in work and there is a negative feedback on the FSH so that the FSH will fall and then the LH will rise and LH surge will occur, following which there is a rise in progesterone. On the one hand, estrogen levels will slowly fall and progesterone levels, once there is, wherever progesterone starts rising, before that, after the LH surge has occurred, ovulation occurs. Again, we will be discussing this later. Ovulation has occurred and after ovulation occurs, a corpus luteum is formed. We know that it is the corpus luteum. See, this is the corpus luteum. It is the corpus luteum that secretes progesterone. And this is maximum on day 21 to day 22 of the menstrual cycle. So, what have they given here? They say that they have measured a serum progesterone on day 21 and it is significantly low. What does that mean? It means that corpus luteum has not formed. Progesterone production is not occurring. So, where does corpus luteum form from? From the over, after the ovum has been released from the follicle. That means that in this case, what has happened is there is an ovulation has occurred. Ovulation has not occurred. That is why the progesterone levels are low. Have you understood this? It is the corpus luteum that should be secreting progesterone. So, the corpus luteum may not have formed. In none of these cases, we can say that corpus luteum hasn't formed. If only if ovulation has not occurred, corpus luteum hasn't been formed. Let us take, up, uh, take them up one by one. What is luteal phase defect? Luteal phase defect is also due to inadequate uh, pro progesterone production by the corpus luteum. But the corpus luteum is there. So, it doesn't mean that the progesterone will be so significantly low. So, what is it due to? It is due to the inadequate production of uh, progesterone. From the corpus luteum. What about PCOS? They have already mentioned that the woman has got very regular cycle. So, PCO, if it is a case of PCOS, you will probably be getting a choice as, uh, I mean, you will probably be getting the history as the woman has got irregular cycles, which is not the case here. What about premature ovarian failure? It means that she will have some complaints of a secondary amenorrhea and irregular cycles with raised gonadotropins. So, here our answer is an ovulation. Look at this question. They are saying that she has regular menstrual cycles occurring every 28 days with normal flow and duration. But since they have all said in the question that her serum progesterone is very low, that is why her answer is an ovulation. But if they hadn't mentioned serum progesterone or they had, the question was something else, they have not mentioned anything regarding serum progesterone, you must always think that whenever you get a question like this, if a woman has got regular menstrual cycles occurring every 28 days, Unless she is on oral contraceptive pills, then she will be ovulating in all probability. Because look at this cycle. Look at the hormones. Look how they are produced. 
unless the hormones are produced as the hormones produce as the hormones are increased and as the hormone falls that is how the endometrial cycle also works right so if they've got all the hormones in the correct amount only will the uh, bleeding happen every 28 days so since they've mentioned so in the question that her progesterone level was abnormally low we take that the answer is an ovulation all right is that clear if you've got doubts please be sure to put it down in the comment box okay now another question that you can expect with regard to the hormone production of the menstrual cycle is what are the levels of hormones on the day of ovulation what happens to the hormones on the day of ovulation are all the hormones low is only one hormone high is lh high fsh low the, the choices can be different but look at this ovulation is occurring see this is a 28 day cycle and uh, ovulation is occurring here what are the hormone uh, what is the hormone pattern like all the hormones are high right lh is high i'm not saying they are their highest point but they are also not at their uh, minimum they are not here this is where the baseline they are they all remain high so if you get a question like that at ovulation what are the levels of hormones like fsh is in high lh is high estrogen is high progesterone is also high okay please keep this in mind you might get a question like this don't get confused there nothing much to remember about all the hormones will be high on the day of the menstrual cycle i um, mean on the day of the ovulation provided she has got a 28 day menstrual cycle okay what next you have a 32 year old woman she presents to the fertility clinic again with the one year history of difficulty conceiving regular menstrual cycles every 28 days her partner's uh, semen analysis is normal histosalpingogram shows patent fallopian tube on the day 14 of her cycle she undergoes a transvaginal ultrasound which shows a dominant follicle in the right ovary she is advised to time uh, intercourse around ovulation what is the question which of the following is the most accurate indicator that fertilization is likely to occur look at the question again i don't think you must have had much uh, exposure to fertility during your clinics so here this woman has got a 28 day menstrual cycle like we mentioned before unless her serum progesterone values have been mentioned we consider that she is somebody who is ovulating regularly all right everything else is normal on day 14 she undergoes a transvaginal ultrasound there is a dominant follicle what does that mean she is likely to ovulate within the uh, maybe within the next few hours she is advised to time her intercourse how can you know let us look at the previous picture once more we had talked about the lh surge when does this uh, lh surge occur in relation to ovulation ovulation occurs around 24 to 36 hours after the beginning of the lh surge when does ovulation occur 24 to 36 hours after the beginning of the lh surge that is important and 10 to 12 hours after the peak of the lh surge you have to know this difference you might get a direct question like that when does ovulation occur in relation to lh surge it is 24 to 36 hours after it begins and 10 to 12 hours after the peak of the lh surge so look at the choices when is fertilization most likely to occur after the peak serum lh levels let us also look at the choices once more detection of the ovum in the fallopian tube nobody does that it is it cannot be done in clinical practice okay nobody goes and checks if there is an ovum what do we do if somebody is coming to us uh, for a fertility evaluation we'll ask them to come uh, to us for uh, uh, an ultrasound from say around the day 11 to 12 of the menstrual cycle so we can know whether a follicle is developing whether a dominant follicle will come if a dominant follicle comes and we can tell them that you are likely to ovulate in the next few hours all right anyway we cannot detect an ovum in the fallopian tube presence of sperm in the cervix yes you can check for sperm in the cervix we will come to post coital test later presence of sperm in the cervix will not guarantee pregnancy just because there is sperm in the cervix does not mean that the woman is going to become pregnant what is the next one basal body temperature rise basal body temperature rise actually it reflects the effect of progesterone progesterone is a thermogenic hormone but basal body temperature rise where is progesterone secreted from 
it is secreted from the corpus luteum we had discussed this in the previous question so for the rise of the basal body temperature a corpus luteum must be formed in the first place where does the corpus luteum form from? It can be formed only after ovulation has occurred. So, we cannot tell the woman to time her uh, intercourse around the rise of basal body temperature. All right. So, basal body temperature occurs after ovulation. We cannot guarantee that also. When is fertilization most likely to occur? After the peak serum LH levels. Next question. A 28-year-old woman is undergoing evaluation for infertility. She has regular 28-day menstrual cycles, ovulates regularly. She has been using ovulation predictor kits, which measures the uh, luteinizing hormone. At home, and notices a positive result, typically around day 14 of a cycle. She asks about the timing of intercourse. Again, it is a similar question. When does ovulation occur? Ovulation occurs 24 to 36 hours after the LH surge. After the LH surge means after it, start, after it begins. 10 to 12 hours after the peak. If you get, if you got a choice of 10 to 12 hours, again, you go for 24 to 36 hours. That is your answer. Unless it has been specifically mentioned in the choices, 10 to 12 hours after the peak of LH surge, your answer will be 24 to 36 hours after LH surge. Okay. See, there it is. You've got the onset from 24 to 36 hours after the onset, ovulation will be occurring. But from the peak, around 10 to 12 hours. All right. I hope this is clear. This is actually the basis of the menstrual cycle. This has to be very clear for you because we'll be, uh, this is what we'll need to discuss fertility also. All right. A 34-year-old woman is being treated for infertility and is undergoing ovulation induction therapy. She has been prescribed clomiphene citrate, which she takes on days 3 to 7 of her menstrual cycle. After completing the course, she is monitored with transvaginal ultrasound to assess follicular development. We had just talked about this. On day 12 of her cycle, a dominant follicle is seen and she is advised to administer an injection of HCG to trigger ovulation. What is the question? What is the primary mechanism of action of clomiphene citrate in inducing ovulation? What is clomiphene citrate? Clomiphene citrate is a serum. It is a selective estrogen receptor modulator. It is a serum. What does it do? Where does it act? This is where clomiphene citrate acts. In fact, clomiphene citrate acts on the receptors of the hypothalamus. And what does it do? This one, this will, it binds to the to the estrogen receptors where in the hypothalamus and what happens what does estrogen do it has got a feedback negative inhibition on the fsh and lh thereby causing a negative inhibition on the gnrh also so the negative feedback of the negative feedback of estrogen is lost right it has blocked the estrogen receptors so the negative feedback of estrogen on gnrh is lost what happens then there is a rise in the gnrh what happens when there is a rise in GnRH? There is a rise in the FSH and there is a rise in the LH. And when there is a rise in the LH, what happens when there is an LH surge? There will be, it will do what? It will promote the development of a follicle. That is the action of clomiphene citrate. Look at the choices. Inhibition of gonadotropin releasing hormone secretion? No, it actually increases gonadotropin. But that is not, it does not directly act on GnRH. It acts on the estrogen receptors in the hypothalamus, blocking them, thereby indirectly increasing the secretion of GnRH. What else? Um, it blocks the estrogen receptors in the hypothalamus to increase it. That is what we said. It does not directly stimulate the ovaries. Does it mimic the action of LH to trigger ovulation? No. See, they have said that in the question. On day 12, you have done a scan and what have you seen? You have seen a dominant follicle. Now you want uh, to see this is a controlled environment. You are treating somebody for fertility. You cannot wait indefinitely hoping that this follicle will rupture. All right. So there is a condition called a luteinized unruptured follicle where the follicle will not rupture and the ovum will not be released. So you cannot wait indefinitely like that. On day 12, once you have seen a dominant follicle, you want to artificially induce a rupture of the follicle so that you can be sure that ovulation has occurred and that she can time her intercourse accordingly. So for that, what have they given? They have administered HCG injection to trigger ovulation. 
So what does HCG mimic? This means that HCG will be mimicking the action of LH to trigger ovulation. This is the action of HCG. Just like they have asked about clomiphene citrate, you might also get a question about HCG asking why she is advised to administer an injection of HCG to trigger ovulation. What is the mechanism of action of HCG? If that was a question, this is your answer. It mimics the action of LH to trigger ovulation. Okay, so you've got two mechanisms of action there. I hope you've got both of them. Clomiphene citrate blocks the estrogen receptors in the hypothalamus while HCG mimics the action of LH and produces ovulation. Is that clear? Shall we move on? Here you have a 28 year old woman. She is again undergoing fertility evaluation. She has got a biopsy taken from her ovarian tissue. The histological section of the biopsy is shown below. The image shows a large round cell. See this is a large round cell with a prominent nucleus. It is surrounded by a thick eosinophilic layer known as a zona pellucida. And several small surrounding cells are seen forming a corona radiator around the central cell. What is this an image of? This is an image of a primary follicle. The primary follicle. The primary follicle contains the oocyte in the center. It has got the zona pellucida surrounding it and then it has got the uh, different cells. How was primary follicle formed under the influence of which hormone? It is formed under the influence of? FSH. So, it has got the follicular cells. These are the follicular cells in the primary follicle. The follicular cells will differentiate into the, this one here, the granulosa cells and the theca cells. Okay. So much is clear. You know what has happened in the primary follicle. What is the question? Which of the following cells plays a critical role in the hormonal regulation of follicular development during the menstrual cycle? That is your question. Not what this is, not what uh, everything does. Which is Which of the cells plays an important role in the hormonal regulation of the menstrual cycle? What are the hormones mainly involved in the menstrual cycle? Estrogen and progesterone. Progesterone, you know, comes from corpus luteum. So, that is not there. Where does estrogen come from? That is the answer here. Estrogen comes from the granulosa cells. So, the granulosa cells will secrete estrogen and therefore that is the one that plays an important role in the follicular development. What about theca cells? Theca cells also secrete hormones but they mainly secrete androgens and it does not have any role to play during the uh, menstrual cycle. What about the luteal cells? The luteal cells are derived from these. No, the theca cells and the granulosa cells together have to form the luteal cells and uh, that of course only after the ovulation. So, and it secretes progesterone. So, that has not got anything to do here and sertoli cells are seen where? Not in the female. Sertoli cells are important in spermatogenesis.